what is next for virtual reality? The Matrix and Sword Art Online level stuff is clearly the end game, but I'm not expecting anything on that note to like the 2040s at the very earliest. So what are we going to be doing for like the next 20 years? If we ignore the VR AR hybrid goodness and focus only on the PC room scale tethered style, all I expect is a whole lot of refinement and a whole lot of not getting popular. That's not exactly a bad thing in my opinion, but I'll lay out where I'm coming from on the matter and let you come to a decision for yourselves. Hello Virtual Dreamers, Gregory here. To start off on the positive notes, we need only look at the way VR has progressed so far and what developments are getting focused on to get an idea of what to expect for the future. History serves as a good place to start, and while brief, VR's tech over the past 8 years or so since the 2012 VR renaissance has been focused on improving two things the head mounted display and tracking systems. Going by the Oculus Rift DK1, we started with just rotational tracking, an 800 by 1280 60Hz display, and simple lenses. While now, we have lighthouse tracking, 1440 by 1600 resolutions per eye, and up to 144Hz refresh rates in headsets like the Valve Index. We've also gone from fields of view of 90 degrees to closer to 130 degrees, and it's safe to assume improving specs are in the group of things coming next for virtual reality. On the note of things that can actually be counted on, software development is a never-ending death march that can be relied upon to yield interesting progress over time. Both the Oculus platform and Steam VR have a bevy of useful features that let you get your VR experiences easily, conveniently, and with far fewer bugs than in the early days. Games-wise, I think we're also steadily seeing the development of some standard practices for titles, like allowing smooth locomotion in games that use artificial locomotion, certain practices for grabbing objects, and VR sickness mitigation strategies. We're still in the early days, but I expect to see the community benefit more as titles release and we learn what works and what doesn't more over time in the room scale and stationary paradigms. And so far, I've just been speaking within the bounds of what we know for sure to expect from our current history. There's quality of life and immersion improvements to be expected from some of the hard work goals that are already being discussed publicly. Foveated rendering, environment scanned levels, verifocal displays, head related transfer functions, pancake lenses, better ergonomics, there's work being done to dramatically improve to make the experiences we have with our PC VR and console headsets even better. The refinement era of VR's current form is certainly something to look forward to, but I'm not gonna lie, it feels a little bit weird for us to be at this kind of stage when there are still some massive issues to be dealt with in the medium. These aren't the kinds of things that can be ignored, and I suspect that we won't see stationary, tethered, room-scale VR hit the mainstream till they're addressed in some capacity. To address the one that is most quickly evident, the expectation that is typically associated with VR, you know, the feeling of being in the game, is currently only being delivered upon in very limited scenarios. If you put on the headset, walk around only a few feet with a body that matches yours well enough, and don't touch anything, it can feel precisely like you're in another world, aka the feeling of presence. Unfortunately, that feeling is more often than not fleeting, as a multitude of sensory discrepancies almost inevitably break the illusion after a short stint. Why does nothing offer force feedback or haptic responses? How am I moving just by tilting my thumb? Where are the g-forces from these movements going? Whenever a disconnect occurs between our real senses and the virtual feedback occurs, we at best just end up losing the sense of presence we're working so hard to attain, and at worst, some people get sick and need to stop playing. Hardly the transported to another world vision when you're uh, laid out flat on a couch trying to keep your lunch. It also bears reiterating that our movement in virtual worlds remains very limited. The VR locomotion problem is alive and well. Until we take it out so that moving throughout the virtual world feels just as natural as it does moving in real life, many game types are going to have to constrain their design to account for room scale ranges and ground level interactions. To bring in the other larger point, it bears mentioning that just about every entertainment immersion platform, aside from tethered VR as we know it, is usually far cheaper, more mature, and less restricted in terms of design. Want massive open worlds that can be fun to navigate? Console and PC gaming have you covered. Want a game wherever you are? 
Handheld and mobile gaming do that splendidly. Even the mobile VR and AR form factors are less restricted than tethered VR design-wise, since they have the luxury of being designed to adapt to any space. And the AR aspect brings about intrinsic design expectations and systemic benefits that being tethered just doesn't bring. The AR solution to the locomotion problem is to change the game level to suit the real world environment or let you go outside if you want a full range of space. That's borderline flawless, as it works off of what the platform already does to track the user, the real world basis means that it feels immersive by default, and the virtual aspect allows for some exciting new design possibilities. VR's best, at this point, would be either omnidirectional treadmills or building environment rigs that matched up to the virtual setup. Those two items are neither particularly cheap, effective, or well-developed at this stage, and I'm pretty sure the sales data for PC racing and flight sim hardware should let us know the odds of omnidirectional treadmills becoming a breakout hit. I could go on with a number of issues I don't see VR resolving before brain computer interfaces are a thing, but I think this should be enough to show you why I don't expect the tethered VR form factor, wireless or not, to become a dominant entertainment form anytime soon. This all being said though, I did say at the beginning of this video that I don't think this is all that bad. So let's take a moment to remind ourselves why it is that the current VR paradigm isn't going anywhere and you're going to experience even more improvements over the years. To get the obvious out of the way, Tethered VR has sold millions of units to this day because there is clearly value in the experience and technology. Even if we give mobile another decade of our recently slowed down processor improvement progress, the sheer power a large computer unit of the same era with better cooling, more energy to use, and bigger components will achieve will be vastly superior. It's just how this stuff works. I've compared visuals I've seen in Quest titles to the PS2 era in the past, so you can imagine how nice it is to connect to a PC and enjoy the wonders of modern hardware and higher specs. In addition to the more visual stuff, the greater CPU power also means more sophisticated simulations and mechanics can be built into PC and console VR titles than can be accomplished in the mobile or AR space at the moment, which makes it ideal for applications that could benefit from the increased precision, such as simulator titles and architectural visualization. Throw in that the increased power clearly makes it easy to run anything the mobile space can, and you can be confident that anything that doesn't try to take advantage of world scale or massive arenas can comfortably be used for tethered VR platforms just fine. Since a lot of the applications being developed for this space tend to be either very practical, productivity centered, or demand a lot of power, it means that this niche can rely upon the wealthy enterprise, industrial, military, and medical sectors to serve as patrons to its greater applications. I get that the clear divide in the markets and uses for present tethered VR can seem a bit limiting from a scoping perspective, but it can also be said that it gives a clear grasp of the demographic for products for anyone that wants to get into the space. Much like how we don't see massive AAA titles being adapted for mobile most of the time, and casual titles have mostly moved away from the PC and console space, so too can we expect that the obvious limitations hardware-wise for VR and AR tech means that we'll likely see developers take an either-or approach in most cases, rather than try to level things out and fit things across both platforms. This may be unfortunate if you're on one and can't leverage the titles of the other, but after a certain point, I think more AR mixed reality type players won't care much for the limited PC VR interactivity, and the stationary and room scale VR gamer won't care much for having to go outside to the park or run around their house to play a video game. Then again, the strongest reason why the near future for virtual reality as we know it is going to remain bright kind of comes down to this not really having to be an either or situation. I've been discussing the divide between mixed reality and tethered PC and console VR headsets like it's a big thing, but honestly, it can come down almost entirely to how we use the devices. I've used my Oculus Quest with my PC plenty thanks to the Oculus Link cable and virtual desktop, while PC VR headsets like the Oculus Rift S can theoretically be used in just as versatile a manner as the mobile stuff if you find an appropriate portable computing device like a laptop or backpack rig. 
these technologies are very intertwined. So don't expect to suddenly see foveated rendering and parafocal displays on mobile VR and then not have the similar option be available or possible to use in desktop VR or with a computer. I expect the more mobile hybrid and AR spaces will be getting a massive boost tech-wise and funding-wise over the next 20 years, and we're thankfully in a situation where this rising tide will lift all boats. So if you ask me what I think is next for VR as we know it, I'd say a lot of good things. VR may not be able to compete with traditional gaming or entertainment platforms during the next few decades profit and popularity wise, but it doesn't need to in order to offer value, and I think there will be something for everyone if you're willing to grow with the medium. I mean it though, seriously, you gotta grow with the medium. All of you who want like SAO and Nerve Gear level stuff in like two years, I'd say either settle for high immersion VR, invent the technology for yourself instead of just asking people to do it for you, or just keep posting the I want Nerve Gear comments and hope that it'll magically cause Gabe Newell and Elon Musk to fuse into an IRL Kaibaki Eco or something. Seems like your best bet. I mean, nothing set in stone for the future after all. Thank you very much for watching this video. Be sure to rate, comment, share, and subscribe to let YouTube algorithm sama know that you want to come back here for more. Till next time, my fellow adventurers and dreamers, this has been Gregory. Logging out.